Welcome to Malcolm Reed's How to Barbecue Right, a podcast where we talk about barbecue, share recipes, and discuss all things delicious. And now here's your host, Malcolm and Rochelle Reed. Hey, welcome back to the How to Barbecue Right podcast. I'm your host, Malcolm Reed, joined by my lovely, talented wife, Miss Southern Shell. And we got Tyler on the board. Shell, how you doing this week? Doing pretty good. A little... I guess back to school funk. Back to school. Hey, I mean, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm still, I'm still on that back to school high. <laughs> I'm so glad we're back to school in the routine. Been to the gym. I mean, I've been doing good, chill. I know. Been going and hit that treadmill, trying to walk off some of these calories. <laughs> <laughs> um, real quick, I wanted to talk about the Palmer Home campaign. Yes, that was first on my list. It's starting to come to an end, really. Um, Labor Day won't be long. Yeah, Labor Day is the last day. Um, We are doing a pig picking here at the shop. We are going to cook a whole hog here. We're going to hang out. We're going to talk barbecue. We're going to have some drinks. We're going to eat a lot of courses. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) It's going to be in a moose-boosh all day. Um, Oh, that's my favorite. (laughs) But it's going to be only for, we're only going to have the people that helped us raise the money for the Palmer Home. Top Mm -hmm. five fundraisers and a guest. They're going to come here to the shop, hang out, have a great time. We're going to have a whole hog eating contest. We're going to expect each one of them to eat about 25 pounds of hog meat. See, See, you, get a part, year, you get a partner, you come in, you get this tray of hog meat. That's going to be the grand finale. That's the grand finale. After we boosh them all day. you got to kill six beers each. <laughs> See how much hog you can eat. How much hog meat. You're going to give them all the, the vinegar sauce you can dip it in. Yeah. Oh, that's going to be fun. No, I'm excited about that. So if someone was just interested in cooking a whole hog, they could come and kind of pick up a lot of information. Oh, yeah. We're going to, yeah. I mean, we're going to go over the whole process and they're going to see how we do it. So it's going to be, now, hog takes a while, so we will have to start it, but we're still going to cover everything we did. So they're going to see it on the grill kind of in the end stages when it's getting done and what mm-hmm. we do to it, but that'll, they'll get to see a lot of it. Yeah, and ask questions yeah. and, and get hands on. Um, Probably going to cook a 150 pound hog. That's the size I like to cook. It ain't going to be a small one. So it'll be a, it's going to be a lot. So it'll be a whole hog dinner. Yeah. They'll probably make them hoggy bags to, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to take back to the hotel <laughs> in case you want some leftover. Um, but if you want to get involved and help us raise money for the Palmer Home so you can come to this very important pig picking, um, go to howtobarbecuewrite.com forward slash Palmer, P A L M E R. And we're doing a live stream next Wednesday, August 24th. Yes. And that's going to be. That's kind of we're, helping. I mean, we're going to be awareness. talking about the Palmer home during this thing, but it's really going to be those Q&As that we like to do where people can jump on, ask a question, get it answered, just hanging out. We'll probably, I don't know. What do you think? It's going to be an hour, hour and a half, two hours, depending on how long, how many questions we get. <laughs> see, see, where yeah. see where the crowd takes us. See where the crowd takes us. I'm yeah. saying like 45 minutes. 45. <laughs> <laughs> no, an hour, yeah. hour, hour and a half. Well, you, you get into those and you answer so many questions. It goes mm-hmm. by so it fast. Does. It's a lot of fun. Um, but this one's going to be all about football food, tailgating and football foods. Oh, because you know what? Football season is on us. I got, fantasy, I got two fantasy drafts next week. College football starts up the third. That's I mean that's the first. It's day. the first probably because I'm yeah sure I'm sure there'll the be Thursday. a kickoff game or yeah. something. But for me it's that Saturday. Yeah, it's opening season. dove season. College football kicks <laughs> off. Pros will be right behind it. So we may talk fantasy draft next week. Yeah, anybody's got questions on the draft? Heck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Coming from I'm a, actually drafting for some. Yeah, place. that's <laughs> man. You got, got tapped. So you Shell has been at our at at. I'm in a, a league with some buddies, and I've been in this league for, gosh, 10 years, over, maybe longer. No, maybe longer than Michael's been alive. It started when we were in college, and I was in it when we were in college, but then I kind of lost interest, and they kicked me out. And a spot came <laughs> open, and I got in. <laughs> and then when we got married, yeah. we got in. But then, so we've been drafting. And it, the highlight of the fantasy football year is the draft to me. I love it. I really, I mean, I, it's hard for me to keep up with it going all year. I'm not that crazy with stats guy. And, Making changes, I do good. I've won it a couple. There's a couple guys that have been in this league since inception. On channel, that's been since '98. Uh, no, no, it'd be more like 2000, 2000? Yeah, 2001, something like that. But that haven't. That there's guys that have been in the league the whole time and haven't won. <laughs> I, I got in and won it twice. Yeah, <laughs> well, I've done all right. Well, you're pretty good at it. And these guys take it serious. And then we're doing another league, and this is kind of a fun league because um, 
Michael, our son, is getting interested in fantasy football and stuff, and so we're going to me and a couple of guys are going to teach these kids. We're going to beat up on these kids in fantasy football. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to run them through the ropes and, and let them see what it's like to, to to manage a team for you know a whole season. So it's kind of a couple kids, couple of dads, yeah, kind of league, yeah. But anyway, we always host the draft. Yes, and now we got that. So that's going to be coming up. 26 is my draft day. Is yeah, that right? it's next Saturday. No, that's one, and then it's the 28th. Next Saturday, yeah. Yeah. I got two next because I got to have a draft party for the kids' ones. So pizza and wings and Kool Aid, I guess. All I know is there's a bunch of nacho cheese back there. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of nacho we'll cheese will be up. dispensed. <laughs> we stocked up for football season. She, yeah, when we went to Sam's was a week or two ago, she was like, I got to get some nacho cheese. We got like flat. Like it's <laughs> six gallons of cheese. When you want nacho cheese, you got to go all the way to South Haven. It's yeah. the whole town over. Heck yeah. They went up out. on nacho cheese. Yeah, it used to be five dollars to six dollars yeah, a now can. Now it's like 10, 10 bucks, ain't it? It's yeah. still it's still worth it, man. I'd pay ten dollars for a can of cheese all day long. You can't make it and put it in a can. You could dispense it out of that cheese. Yeah. I think I'd pay thirty dollars a can. Thirty? <laughs> oh, you bought it online? I just love nacho. No, cheese. I don't order it online. Go to Sam's or Costco. I mean, now Walmart has a brand. It's a uh, Rico's. Rico's. Yeah, that's it's right. Not I'm as kind good. of partial to Rico. I just yeah. like the name. It's like Uncle Rico's <laughs> <laughs> nacho cheese. But anyway, back to me drafted. Yes. So we had somebody that's got like a family emergency or a family event or something can't come to our our draft, and Shell was the person. That I ran the board. You ran the board. We do it all like an offline draft where everybody puts in. You put it in. You turn your pick in, and then somebody enters it in, and it keeps up with it on the big screen. And, and that was you. Heck yeah, I enjoyed I, it. You know my favorite part about that is I have pre- the most fun of everybody. Yeah, you do. You do. <laughs> <laughs> no, you have these sounds. I guess uh, David, our commissioner, builds these sounds into the board, and you can just hit a hit a function button or something, and it'll cheers them, applause them, booze them, and you've got you've got it down. <laughs> I mean, it's hilarious when people make picks and Shell hits them with the sounds. I think, I mean. Now was I don't, one year somebody didn't realize that it was me doing it. They thought it was automated. <laughs> it was Rodney, and he kept, I would boo him every single time because he would get so Man, I thought that was a great pick. I don't know. <laughs> He said, "Why does this thing keep booing me?" <laughs> <laughs> so you're gonna you're gonna draft for somebody and run the board, or are we bringing in know. another board person? I don't know. I'm pretty talented. I yeah. could probably do both. One of these days, I'm gonna talk. I'm gonna talk the guys into letting us have like a commissioner where they read the pick. So we actually have to like walk up to the podium and <laughs> give it to somebody, <laughs> and they're standing there with you know the fourth pick in round four. I figured um, at some point y'all would get a sponsor. <laughs> really make yeah. it big. Hey, there's a perfect place for Blue Plate Mayo. <laughs> I can't think of anything better than a Mayo sponsorship for a fantasy draft. <laughs> Nothing better. Nothing, Nothing better. comes to mind. <laughs> Nothing else. <laughs> well, maybe Miller Lite. <laughs> I mean, we are ribs and whiskey, so I guess yeah. Jack Daniels would be a good one, too. There's there's, there's plenty of opportunity if anybody wants us. <laughs> what do you think a fantasy football draft sponsorship would look like? Yeah, we'll give you some coupons. Maybe some <laughs> yeah. <koozies. laughs> yeah. We'll pay for the Hooters wings. Yeah. yeah. Now if you were if you were doing a live broadcast of that, it might be entertaining. Yeah. We probably we'd have to sign a lot of waivers. Yeah. And, man, <laughs> it would be really I'm hard. Out. You're out. out. You don't want to be affiliated with that. Mm-mm. You don't know what's getting said. We've got school principals in there. <laughs> People in authority <laughs> positions probably do not want to be like me. I'm all for it. Um but anyway, so next Wednesday, mark your calendar, live stream, August 24th. Send, you're going to set up a... Time. Yeah, there will be a live Facebook event that will let you know all the places we're going to go live because we haven't 100% decided that yet, but we'll come back with more information on that. Um, but yeah. You can submit questions ahead of time. Yep, submit questions in the Let's Get to Cooking yeah. community on Facebook. So if you're not a part of that, make sure y'all join it up. And uh, there will probably be a, something at the top, pinned to the top, that will let you comment on it, and we'll pick from those questions. And then we'll also pick from the live chat on the day of so what's your favorite football food shell what do you consider football just anything you get at a stadium or yeah tailgate? Uh, stadium tailgates uh bar food sports bar yeah wings pizza brats sausages yeah but what's your favorite you're naming all of them i mean i know if you had to pick what's your one favorite? 
Probably wings. Yeah, wings. Yeah, but see, there. I don't consider wings. I don't go to a ballpark and get wings. Like I'm yeah, not gonna go yeah. to a, a football game and get them. But if I'm going, if we're at home having people over, fancy draft. I mean, wings is right. What about there. you go to a sports bar? Wings. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can't eat wings yeah. at a stadium. Uh, yeah. <laughs> At a stadium, if I had to pick a stadium, it's probably going to be nachos. Yeah, that's a good one. That's my hot dogs and yeah. nachos. I, I love a good stadium dog too. Mm-hmm. I like jalapeno poppers at home. Yeah, yeah, yeah like that's those. a good one. Yeah. Like I, I just knew ranch. you were going to pick a dip. I do love the dips. Yeah, <laughs> it's hard to pick. Nacho bar. That's pretty much <laughs> all my favorite food. Yeah. yeah, if you had to pick a food group, which one do you like? Bar yeah, food. You know, bar food. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a problem with that. It's Burgers. part of your charm. <laughs> Burgers, pizzas, Find fries. you a woman that likes bar food, and you can go places. <laughs> you can have a great relationship. If she'll set up, a, she'll set up a sports bar with you and just be happy with the menu they throw out and, and, a, and a draft beer, you've got a winner, bud. <laughs> that is me. <laughs> it's true. You don't need I a mean, fancy that- wine bar. <laughs> That probably doesn't You'll drink box wine at a sports bar, won't you? You're not above that. I'd rather have the draft beer. <laughs> <laughs> the box That's how we met. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, last weekend we went to the SEA cook-off Man, in Townsend. I'm telling Places y'all. And seasonings. I'm telling y'all that was a fun event. Yeah. And I don't know if it's because I wouldn't cook and I was just getting to socialize and do all the fun stuff we can, you know, hang out with my friends and all that. But it was a, it was a great time. What Shane had eighty state cooks, and then That's six crazy, others yeah. that some some that just did the ancillary. And um, I forget how many kids cooks they had. It was several, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, I'd say twelve to fifteen kids. At least, kids yeah. Cooks. Man, they had some great stuff. We so our event started. We went over Friday. We got there early. We, I mean, hey, I tell you what, on that one. We went over to take some stuff for the goodie bags. If you paid your entry fee of what 150 bucks or whatever it was, you got a goodie bag that gave you way more than that back yeah, in it. Yeah. So it was like you got to cook it for free, really. I mean, there was multiple rubs in there, sauces, charcoal, what? Char- bag of charcoal. I mean, there was all kinds of good stuff in there. It was probably, if I had to guess, I bet it was 200 something dollars worth of product mm-hmm. in there. I mean, there was some good stuff. But so we got there early. We put in a little. Uh, bird brine and chili seasoning and salt, two bottles of all, sauce. Yeah, I figured all those guys get rubs all the time. Yeah. you know some basting brushes. We put. I mean, there was some good stuff. Stickers. Yeah. I mean, so we got there and went to the clubhouse just in time for lunch. And I got to talk about this skirt burger. You ordered one, and then I had my eye on it too. I ordered one, and the skirt burger. What's the name of that? Uh, uh, Cooper's Hawk Golf Course. I think the, the thing is like the hawk, Hawk's Roost is the name of the, oh, of the restaurant, yeah. but it's it's just in the clubhouse, little few table restaurant. I don't know, yeah, they got a dozen tables, um, but man, and the menu is kind of small. But they got a skirt burger on it, and it's it's like an old fashioned diner style flat top burger. They smother it with cheese, and I'm talking about cheese to come out to come out and cover the plate, so it makes this skirt of crispiness all around it with melty cheese over the burger, and they put it on. I don't remember what kind of bun. Brioche, I think, wasn't it? It wasn't. I think so. I think it was. It wasn't oh, just like a regular yeah. old hamburger bun. You didn't pick the stuff off. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it had like a, what, a bacon jam yeah, on top? Yeah, bacon jam. And it was good. It was really good. And it came with fried uh, crinkle cuts. Crinkle, good old crinkle cuts. <laughs> that was that was how the, you, you know, that's how my weekend started off. And that was great. But I had another good burger that weekend too. As we hung out, Tennessee Mojo, Jay came and uh he cooked in the steak and the trout, and yep. he cooked this kind of a late lunch, early dinner Saturday. He, he brought a little griddle, and, man, he did um, – he called it an Oklahoma onion burger, mm-hmm. and it was it was dynamite. So he, did you see how he did them? I went over there and watched. Yeah. He did a – he just released a video. Did you go watch it? I watched it yesterday because I, I kind of – he was like, I need some more ideas of – to, he wants to do some more smash burgers. He's into cooking on this, you know, traveling and cooking on this little Blackstone. And um, so I was like, Let's, you know, Jay, you ought to do a whiskey version of it where you caramelize those onions. Because the way he does it, he takes onions and puts them on a mandolin and slices them paper thin, almost where you can see through them. And then he gets a, a little bit of ghee on that Blackstone, puts those onions down. Why he, ghee? 
Is there? Oh, you can use melted butter. You can use any of that anything. stuff. You know, griddle butter, whatever it is. But it's just, it's just, you know, that's his choice. Yeah, yeah. it probably don't brown, so it'll stand up to the heat on the griddle, the ghee would. For you know, it's not gonna burn on you as fast. So he throws some of that down, smooths it around, gets him a pile of those onions going, and then he takes his burger meat and he does it like I think he said third pound balls, like meatballs, mm-hmm. puts it on there, smashes it out, and then kind of fries the onions a little bit in that ghee. No, so he puts the burger right on top yeah. of the of the onions and mashes it into it. So they're getting crispy on the edges, and they're still sautéed kind of in the middle. It almost is like it cooks into yeah, the Yeah, it cooks into it. That's what yeah. makes it the onion burger. Then he flips it, double cheeses both patties, <laughs> puts his buns down, and then puts like the top bun on, you know, right over the patties, and then puts the bottom one down and puts one patty on it, and then stacks them. They're just a, just a double cheese onion burger. And we ate it with, what, mayonnaise and pickles? Yeah. And that was it. Some people had mustard. Yeah, but man, it was so good. Yeah. I'm talking about that. That gave that skirt burger a run for its money. I think right that there. was my favorite burger of the weekend out of the two. Out and I the like two. the skirt burger, yeah. but Jay's was. You didn't need anything to go with it. Like you didn't need no potato chips, mm-hmm. fries, anything. It was just a big burger. And so I said, Jay, man, add, won't you do a Tennessee, like a, a Tennessee smash burger? Add a little Jack Daniels to those onions so it kind of cooks into them and it caramelizes and gets them sweet. And he did. That's what he did his video on. Y'all go check it out. I made a What's note. What's it? Making it mojo on YouTube? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I made a note. Um, double meat, double cheese, double delicious. <laughs> <laughs> it was really good. It was. So he told me, he's like, man, I, you know, I really want to lean into this doing burgers. He said, I might just do a series on it yeah, and make another them. channel. He's, so that's I said, his thing. Jack, why don't you do how to burger right? <laughs> <laughs> he's like you know that ain't a bad idea he, he, i got a little cameo in that video did, did you catch it uh uh-uh, i didn't watch that one. Oh, the the jack daniels one uh-uh, or tennessee no, no, no. whiskey burger it's like i mean it's like if you blink you're gonna miss it but it's like subliminal he, like, he says <laughs> i had to give credit because i didn't get this idea wham and it flashes and it's like hey i think that was me <laughs> <laughs> no um i had a note to talk about mojo and his channel making it mojo yeah. on youtube um he did some char siu wings, like I guess it was last week. Oh, dude, that looked so good. Yes. So he just took wing pieces, flats and drums, wasn't it? Yeah, and basically vortexed them. Vortexed them, yeah, on his Weber. And then I didn't see what he seasoned them. I'm not with. sure did either. I watched the video. I can't remember what he seasoned them with. But what got me was the color. He put that. He made that char siu sauce, and it's like you know, almost like a red looking. Chinese sweet and soury. Mm-hmm. It's got some, you know, it's got tang. It's got a little, little bit of heat for flavor. And he coated those wings at it after he vortexed them. He brushed it on while it was cooking too, yeah. so it caramelized a little. Yeah, and that it got charry. Yeah, uh, hence char siu. It's supposed to get bits and pieces mm-hmm. of like you. And I think typically they do char siu pork. Like you know, I've seen them do pork belly. I've seen them do yeah. ribs. I've never seen them do wings, and that, and I was like, Jay, that was genius, and it looks so good. And then I think he pulled them off and tossed them again. And after. some more sauce. Yeah, they looked yeah. really, really good. I'm I would be some, all over that. Yeah, I'm all about some Asian flavored wings. Mm-hmm. And Mark, he brought his. Uh, so Mark Williams from Swan Life came, and he was like, he was just there supporting everybody too, just hanging out, and having a good time, help Jay some. But uh, he brought his Blackstone that he travels with. So are they Blackstones? Yeah, they're actual Blackstones, okay. but they're like, Mark had, I think, the 17-inch one. These are tabletop models run off a little green camping bottle. Mm-hmm. You don't have to hook it up to a big propane bottle or nothing. It's got a little cover that goes over it. It's meant for RV. Down. Yeah, yeah, it's camping lifestyle stuff. Yeah. But it's great for barbecue contests. Or tailgates. Or tailgates. Yeah. Or, or the duck blind. <laughs> <laughs> you know, whatever. <laughs> But, you know, I was thinking, man, if you don't have room for a big, like, full-blown Blackstone in your outdoor area, get you one of these little tabletop ones because it's, I mean, they flat cook. That's what I got. I yeah. got the ele- I do have the electric one, though, not yeah. the propane, and it is awesome. Well, is I it was, Blackstone brand? Yep. Yeah. It's, uh, like, the Venture Series, I think they call yeah. it. It's, so you just plug it up to the 110 outlet and roll. Yep, just roll. Yeah. Does it, it get hot enough to do everything with? It does. I have yet to find anything I can't. Yeah. It doesn't get hot. I mean, it definitely, it's like a grill, so you're going to have your hotter spots and yeah. stuff yeah. like that, but I kind of got that figured out, so. 
So, do you feel like you're limited on this uh, space? A little bit, but I'm not usually cooking for that many people, and it's that's kind of the key. Is it, yep. That's exactly what I was saying. A lot of times, you know, we're at camp, so we cook on the big one. And we're cooking for a lot of people, but if we're just cooking like me and you and Michael are down there, it's like you can fire that thing up, and you only use two burners on it because it's mm-hmm. not like I'm using the whole thing. Yeah. But so if you so space was an issue, one of these small ones is great. Uh, Mojo had the 22-inch. And it actually had like two burners on it, and he ran it on a, a little green bottle. But he said it sucks it like fast, and so he had he ended up hooking he hooks it up now to a regular size propane bottle. He said but, he'd rather have the one and, Mark has. Mark yeah. has the the single bottle, and it just has one element that kind of runs down the middle. And I was surprised by how well Mark's heated up, and it didn't use hardly any. Mark said he's he's had that same bottle on it back from their Colorado trip, and he cooked uh, breakfast on it. So he did like yeah. eggs, sausage, Pancake. uh, pancakes, smashed cinnamon rolls, uh, you know, the flattened cinnamon I'm rolls. I'm not a big fan of those. Um, they're okay. You know? Not as good as like a pancake. Like, yeah. <laughs> or a cinnamon roll. Or a cinnamon roll, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're okay, but I mean, I get it. I get it. Uh, what I thought was unique about it, Jay said they, they do biscuits on it, like canned biscuits mm-hmm. or frozen biscuits. And they start them out, and they put one of the domes over it. So he says they do get, like, you. Fl- I think you flip them one time, so they get brown on both sides. But the dome cooks them, and they get, he said, they're, you know, as good as the oven. Yeah. So uh, that, that Blackstone has a lot of potential. Yeah. I love cooking on one. It's fun. It is fun. And it's so easy to keep it clean, like the cleanup on it. Yeah, it's oh, easy. Yeah. It's, it beats doing dishes 100% of the time. Yeah, oh, yeah. Scrape, scrape it off, put a little water on it, let it get good and hot, scrape it again, and re-oil it, and turn it off, and you're good to go. Mm-hmm. And I was scared because of the material it is that it was going to be hard to use metal on it and stuff, and it was going to be hard, harsh on the um, material, and it really hasn't. No, yeah. yeah. The more you cook on them, the better they get. Mm-hmm. I, I think the thing that you can do the worst is just, let it sit and not use it, not get it oiled properly. And I've seen them, you know, get rusty and stuff like that. Or you can always get them back. But. Or you're having a few too many cocktails and forget to clean it up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe. You seen know. that, yeah. Yeah. But it's, if you clean it right after you get through cooking, like, you know, sit, let somebody else run the food inside and you take, I, it don't even take five minutes. It doesn't take but a few minutes to clean one. It's not hard. But I, th- I would do suggest if you buy one for outside, or the tabletop one, make sure you got a cover. Yeah. Because yeah. you don't want – because, I mean, it's going to have a little light layer of grease on it and everything will stick to it. So you need to have something over it to protect it just from dust and stuff that's in the air. I mean, Yeah. We've been bringing ours in the house, and I've been trying to get a stand for it because they sell, like, a stand that goes on top of it. But I am excited to, like, tailgate and stuff with yeah. it, man. It's mm-hmm. going to be fun. So with yours, can you can you indoor cook with it? Yeah. So, like, I would say most of the time we end up just putting it on the counter in the yeah. house. And using it just like that, which makes it just as easy, to be honest with you. Um, but you, but it would be a little bit easier to do it outside, I think, just and keep it out there, kind of. Yeah. Well, Shell's got a little cheap propane, an uh, electric griddle. Yeah, it's, it's just a a Presto griddle. Walmart yeah. for pancakes, and it does, you know, okay inside. Yeah. So I imagine that would even be better. It's about the same size as yeah, one of those. The cleanup is all not as easy as it oh, is on the a Presto. Black, yeah, 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 yeah. That's the worst thing about that thing. Uh-huh, is the cleanup. I hate. Pulling yeah. it out. And it makes a mess all over the counter because it doesn't contain it as well. I don't know. I, I kind of want one of those little travel ones. Well, I don't have a Blackstone at home. So if I had oh, one yeah. of those, I could do things. bring yeah. it out on the counter, do some stuff on it while I'm doing you know barbecue stuff too and incorporate it into some videos. Um. So Saturday morning, we passed out Bloody Marys. That was fun. That was a lot of fun. Instead of cooking, we... we Jumped in the go- in the uh, side by side, shell batched up these bloody and people thought they were. The, I mean, we had people that don't drink Bloody Mary stopping us after they tasted somebody else's and getting them. And I guess everybody was shocked that we were just passing out Bloody Mary. Everybody they thought we were saying, charging how much, them. But, how much are these Bloody yeah. Marys? So tell us which had. How, how did you make each batch? Was about sixty five glasses of Bloody Mary, right? No. That's what we figured. Do you don't think it did that much? I thought it was less than that. I thought it was oh. 40. Well, maybe that's what it was. Yeah. Um, well, I got a punch bucket, you know, like I think it was a five I gallon. It's a pretty big size. Yeah, it was dispenser. The, yeah, dispenser, like a drink dispenser. And um, we have Jim, Jimmy Love's brand Mar- uh, Bloody Mary mix here at the shop. So that's what we used. Um, personally, Morningwood is my favorite. <laughs> but, you know. The original, the spicy, or the deal? <laughs> I like the original, <laughs> yeah. But, um, 
we had Jimmy Loves here, so we went every three bottles of original to one of their hot. Yes, that's how was we it did. was. Mm-hmm. So it's four. Yeah. How many uh, bottles of Jimmy Loves was it to one? Actually, we did so because we remember our ratio. We took was it seven total bottles? And you did oh no or eight? How many bottles of mix did you twelve? Take? Okay, so I think it was five and two. No, fourteen. I think you did five and two, five and two. We took four spicy, and then that'd be eight original. Yes. So that's Sounds what it was. Right. So it was four original Jimmy Loves, Maybe it's three. I don't and then two spice sneaky hots, what it's called, mm-hmm. and then one half gallon of Tito's vodka, or one point seven five liters, whatever that real ratio is. And then pickle juice. And then yeah, how much? Probably probably. At least I'm a cup. At of least a jug. cup, yeah. Eight ounces of dill pickle, like Vlasic dill pickle juice, and then a splash of olive brine. Mm-hmm. As Towns and that gave us some olives, and we just splashed some of that brine off in there. And then the best part was the seasoning that made it give it a little essence. So um, I've discovered that Swine Life Prime Beef <laughs> um, makes the best Bloody Mary seasoning. It does. You don't need any extra pepper, salt, or anything. It's got it in there, and. You want me to tell you why it tastes good? I mean, yeah, it's got a nice MSG. beefy note. It's, it's, got, it's got MSG in it. So if you're sensitive to MSG, you may want to leave that out. But just, I'm telling you that's why. If you hadn't tried the, I mean, not only is it good on beef, it's great in a Bloody Mary. Yeah. It is great. It has that umami. And yes. Because it, I think it has some mushroom powder or something like mm-hmm. that in it. So you don't know it's that flavor, but it's just. Does it have a Worcestershire no, that no, they don't have that element yeah. to it at all. But it kind of gives me that, uh, reminds me of those you flavors. You saying that? I bet that Willingham's dusted off in there with, with it. It would be, be good, would too. It would be good with it. Yeah, because it has the same kind of <clears throat> umami flavors, too. But we loaded that dispenser up in the back of the side-by-side and opened up some, some of our hot dill pickles and pickled okra. Cooler full of ice and went around making drinks. And I had little juices for the kids. And snacks. snacks for the yeah, kids. like breakfast style honey yeah. buns and muffins and bars and all kinds of good stuff. I just stuff. didn't want the kids to be going up there. Didn't get nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, here's some didn't. tomato juice. Yeah. yeah, here's some. Here's some spicy tomato juice. <laughs> you couldn't give it to them. I had the vodka. It was already loaded. <laughs> but that was a hit. We weren't charged. I mean, I didn't know. I was like, Shell, this is a lot of bloody berry. <laughs> we made enough for two batches, so it was probably enough to make you five told me, total. No, probably more than five gallons, really. Yeah. You told me, let's just make one batch. We'll see how that goes. It was a hit. Everybody it loved was. it. We had to go back. We made one side of the little camp, camp in our site area. Had to go back and fill it back up and do the other one. And then we still, I mean, it was it was good. I would love to do that for other events. Like, can we just sponsor, get a yeah. golf cart? I want to be the Bloody Mary Park guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll come around that morning. I said we needed to switch it, too. If we had to switch to Bullfrog, like right after Bloody Mary's, go right going. into Bullfrog. <laughs> I mean, if you drink one Bloody Mary and one Bullfrog, that's a pretty, you're ready to cook a steak by that point. Yeah. <laughs> then you're on your own. You know? <laughs> but it was cool. I really liked the way they did that contest. Um, they had a unique category for the ancillary trout, and I got to try a few of them. And man, there was, it was, every time we were passing out, or when we were passing out Bloody Mary's, I would ask the people, y'all, y'all doing the trout? And what are you doing? See if they, you know, get some yeah, ideas. Yeah. And I heard a little bit of everything. Me too, yeah. From a smoked trout dip to a trout fritters that Mark Lambert did, mm-hmm. kind of an Asian style. Um, Jay did like a blackened trout on a on a Parmesan crostini with a with like a Cajun cream sauce. Um, that jambalaya. Somebody did. Somebody jambalaya. did a trout jambalaya. Man, we. I mean, I heard all kinds of cool things that I didn't think. You know, some people fried it, but yeah. it was. There was some unique dishes on it. Jay got third Jay, place. He did get third place in it with his trout crostini. His was the only trout that I actually tried. It was really, yeah, really yeah. good. Well, somebody did a trout cake. Did uh, Me and Michael tried the trout cake, and it was... What do you mean trout cake? Like a It was uh, like a crab, crab cake, cake okay. but it was a trout cake. Dude, you know, as we was giving up Bloody That's Mary's. That's a good idea. Yeah, and you could not... I mean, it was great. Oh, you could have done that on the black sound real easy. Yeah. You could. I, you know what? I don't know what he, I should have looked over there, and I think he had... Maybe grill a grill griddle on a PK. I yeah. think he had that new griddle on the PK. I got to get me one of those. Have you seen that? You they've got, got a wish list. They've got a flat top <laughs> now for the PK. That's cool. So, uh, so is it? Uh, what is it made out of? Aluminum? I imagine. I don't know. I hadn't. I don't or know if it's cast. cast. I, I bet it's. They're cast aluminum grills. It's probably 
cast aluminum. Yeah, so maybe yeah. something. I don't know. I've never seen what it's made out of. But I I would use grill grates flipped over on mine, you know, to get a sear. But now they're making their own specific kind of flat top for it. I'm going to hit Martha up, see if, if I can test that out. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, Jay's was really, really good. So how was the crab cake? It was delicious. I mean, it was, and he served it. He told me he served it with a crawfish cream sauce. I didn't try that. He just came out with the fr- fresh fried crab cake. I mean, I'm sure he did like probably cooked it in clarified butter, and it was crispy, and it was you know it was in between like a crab cake, a really good crab cake, and kind of a salmon croquette, but you couldn't taste. You know, I couldn't. You would have not known it was trout. You would have just thought it was a seafood cake of some sort. Yeah. Um. So for anyone that doesn't know, what is Benny Keefe? It's like a food service provider, purveyor, I guess you would call them. So there's like a Cisco, <laughs> there's... Yeah, U.S. Foods. U.S. Foods. Yeah, these type of places. PFG. Yeah. Benny and Keith. One of them is Benny Keith. Yeah, and they provided the trout filet. It was excellent trout. Like, really good. That was so funny, though. I know where you're going with this. <laughs> <laughs> it was, so Lawson Lynn, who is Shane's son, that run, they run Townsend uh, Supply and Spice Company, um, <laughs> somebody had asked him, you know, I guess they were like, man, I know you're getting all these steaks and getting these trout. Where are y'all getting these trout from? He said, oh, Benny Keith, you know. You know he said, man, that Benny Keith is a fishing son bitch. <laughs> <laughs> he said, catch all these trout. I said, yeah, he is. He, that jerk of fish every, took him two weeks to catch all that. <laughs> you know, you can only get, you can only keep five a day there. So you can think of how many trout he had to catch. You get, that's 10 fillets and then. <laughs> oh, man, Benny, Benny put in some work. I just love they didn't miss a beat. Didn't that they? is a fishing. Lawson <laughs> <laughs> just said, "Yeah, he is." He didn't even try to explain though who, who or what Benny Keith is. He just went with it. So now you know that guy's going around telling everybody, "Man, you know Benny Keith." Yeah. <laughs> we got to find out where he's, he's at next time he's, he's out got there. a honey hole somewhere. He's got a honey hole. Yeah, he must be up there below where they're releasing them or something, <laughs> getting them from the hatchery. <laughs> All weekend, Benny I Keith. only tried one bite of steak, and that was from uh, Mojo. Yeah, that's Go. all. I, that's all I tried too. That's yeah. good. It was really good. I'm just disappointed. I didn't yeah, it was to so, try more it, steak. Yeah. Well, you know, we came back home. My birthday was the Monday, right after the last Monday, and you asked me what we want dinner. So I want a rib. <laughs> I didn't, get any, I didn't <laughs> yeah. get any at the steak contest. So that's what we had for dinner. It I was, cooked you up a rib. Absolutely delicious. It was good. Okay, so I cooked this rib. But it got a little more charry on my, you know, grill marks than I wanted it to. What what caused that? Um, did I have my steak? My did I have the grill? The grill too it hot? was probably too hot. That's yeah. usually when you see that. You probably got a little more coal in there than it needed, and the grates got a little hot. Did you notice what temperature that? Well, you cooked it on the Weber, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Did you notice what temperature it was on? When was I it pegged out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, see when Above before I put feet. the steak on when I uh, and I did use avocado oil to season the. Girl, great. Yeah. Um, but when I was doing that process, it was like 550, right under 600. And I was like, oh, I'm good. Yeah. And I didn't look again. So it it's probably, probably pretty hot. was. It's probably pretty hot. I mean, and, for an eating steak, it was good. Yeah. But And then if you don't, like, you got to watch it, too. When you put that cooking spray on there, you, you got to give it time to kind of cook, cook in and do its yeah. thing. Or it can give you that overly charred kind of. It's just if, if you ever notice that that stuff will almost wipe off. It's not like a true char mark. Kind of gets that wet, kind of runny look. You know, it can. Yeah. But, but I didn't think, I mean, I thought the, the flavor, the char flavor and all that on it was perfect on those ribeyes. They were great. But they weren't SEA quality. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I wasn't mad at it if I was judging. <laughs> Mine was cooked. The, the, it, was, it was a good steak. The, you know, yeah, the tenderness it was, a good was steak. good. Seasoning was good. And I mean, I ate, it, I ate half and half the next day in a wrap for lunch. How much I liked it. Um, and then they did the kids' pork chop. Yeah. And I did taste a bite of I had, pork chop. Yeah, really I did. Good. I did. Buddy mm-hmm. Caden cooked one. Man, his was so tender and juicy. I don't know how he didn't get a call in it. And then there's two other little girls. I think it was Sonny Moody's daughters. That they We drove by and was stopped, and they brought up a piece of theirs that they had just turned in, and it was amazing, yeah. too. Those kids were flat cooking. I mean, they were serious about it. You know, the great thing is there was 80-something, 80, 80 steak cooks there, and 
there were some locals in there, but the majority of them were like seasoned cooking steak, you know, steak teams or whatever. Yeah. And a local guy that first ever cook won it. Wow. And he got second. Oh, did he? Yeah. I forgot who won it. Oh, I thought he won it. No. <laughs> well, anyway, he was so tickled like that morning when I drove by. He's like, man, I just wanted to come, you know, thank y'all for coming out and all that stuff. This is going to be my first time cooking. Any advice or whatever? I said, man, just did you listen to that last podcast? I told you how to cook it. And I was like, what are you cooking on? And he, had, I noticed over there he had one of the old Duchess PKs. And if nobody knows what that is, it looks like it was made like in the 50s when PK started. Mm-hmm. It's the round, like R2-D2 looking one with the little cone-like lid on it. And they don't even make it. I don't know when they're they, collectors. They, yeah, items, oh, yeah, yeah. And I and I said, you cook it on that that Duchess. He's like, yeah, man. You're not gonna believe it. I I bought a piece of property. Like I don't know if it's a rental home or whatever it was. He bought. He said there was a junk pile out back, and this was thrown in the junk pile. He said I didn't, you know. So I said I, you know, might use it as a grill. So he found a, a grill grate that would fit it or whatever, and got it kind of refurbed back up. And he said now somebody offered him like fifteen hundred dollars for it. Really? Yeah. yeah. He said I ain't selling it. <laughs> but he so he got second. I thought yeah. he got first, but. He, I think he's he did still, get the golden ticket passed down. Yeah, Maybe that's yeah, what it yeah. was. He got so he's going to get to go to the championship, first time ever cooked a steak. That just goes to show you, anybody can go out to an SCA contest and has a chance. I mean, how many food cooking contests do you can a beginner go out there and have a chance to win? And not only win, get a chance to go to their world championship. Yes, there's a lot that goes into competition cooking, you know. Yeah, but steaks are probably the easiest. Uh, to get into. To get into. Yeah. Least expensive. Yes. Because they give you the steaks. All you got to do is pay the entry fee. You don't have to buy a ton of stuff to cook one. I mean, you need your seasonings and you need a grill. And charcoal. And charcoal That's and probably it. a thermometer and a, a table or something. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and a cooler. And some string. I've seen people do it on a tailgate with nothing, yeah. you know. They got a little cooking tote and a little grill they set on, you know, right off. I Peggy mean, used to load everything Peggy, in the back yes, of the Yes, and a, and a, a Camaro. And the Camaro. <laughs> I said, we cooked right beside her and watched her get a call. Yeah. That's a, that's exactly right. But it, it was a lot of fun. Highly recommend y'all get out and go to the steak contest. Michael's yeah. going to be old enough to cook in them on his own now. He's itching. He can't wait. Once he got over there, and got, he was like, man, why couldn't I cook? And I was like, son, not this time. You got one month and you're fully blown eligible. You can join the SCA. You can buy your grill. You can, <laughs> you, can, you, can, you can pay your own entry fee. You're off my <laughs> off the thing. <teeth. laughs> you want to cook? You got to practice. Um, it's only fair, right? I, you want to do it? So. You want to jump in? Jump in. Don't expect me to want to do it more than you want to do it. You know. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm all about it though. Oh, I promised him we'd take him to one. Uh, I already found one to take him to after he turns 13. Yeah, he's excited. I forgot to mention Friday night, too. The highlight was getting to see the band play. You had a good old time Friday night. Oh, man, we were singing, cutting up. There may or may not have been a bucket of fireball balls. (laughs) Have you ever been to a bar where they will sell you a bucket of fireball shots? Like the little The airplane airplane ball. Yeah, I thought I just asked them if they had fireball. They said, yeah, we got fireball. She brought out a few little bottles, and I said, Wait a minute. Where are you getting that? Where'd you get those? And she brought out this bucket. I said, how much for the bucket? It's like 20 of them in there. She said, 50 bucks. I said, sold real quick. I was like, that's cheap. You got any ice we can put in this bucket? Man, seven and a half minutes later, we had ice cold fireball, and the good time started to roll. And you, you started a trend. Some other people bought buckets, too. Yeah. Fireball was everywhere. Fireball was everywhere. They said that was the uh, best night. Of, I guess <laughs> of sales they ever had at the at the golf course. I can imagine why at the Hawks Nest. Yeah, oh, we pretty much we drank them out of draft beer, <laughs> and then started to drink them out of canned beer. It's a dry county too. <laughs> you think they would have a stockpile? But it was a good night. They got a frog gigging going. I was supposed to go frog gigging, but I pretty much knew that I wouldn't probably gonna make that. But Joe Wilson was there, and he was leading the charge. And one, we didn't have a light. We didn't have a frog gig. We had What we had was a pond that may or may not have had some frogs in it. That's what we had. Somebody pulled out a fork. Well, <laughs> I, so, I ain't telling on nobody. We can. But there was some silverware on the table, and there was, two, and there was a couple forks in them. And they may or may not 
have been turned into a makeshift frog. I don't know if that happened or not. That was just a suggestion. And um, this week we had a couple short recipes. Yeah, are we are we off are we off all that? We don't want to incriminate ourselves on trespassing <laughs> frog digging. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> Speaking of frogs, I would like us to get some frog legs. Yes, and, no, and that, do a recipe with them. I, I'm thinking barbecue frog legs. Yes, why not? Have you ever seen barbecue frog legs? I don't I think I have. I've only seen them fried. I, I mean, I don't. I don't like, that's I'm the only amphibian I've ever ate. I think. <laughs> but I've only had them fried too. What's a gator? Is it's that a reptile? A reptile. Okay. Yeah. And the slimy, slimy class with them too. <laughs> would you rather? Eat a frog leg or gator? Um, I've had some good frog legs. I've had some great frog legs. I've had some great gator, too, though. I've had some okay gator, and I've had some bad gator. Yeah. I've had some great gator sausage, fried gator, gator tail. I've had some good yeah. fried gator. But, yeah. What, what, what about you, Tyler? Gator nuggets. Easy. Gator never gator. tried a frog leg. Don't know. You've never tried them? Would huh. you? Tastes like chicken. I tried anything once. Yeah. <laughs> It's like a rich We're getting fried. We got to order some crab uh, frog legs. I bet Kevin has them. I, I, if he can't, I bet he can get them. And we'll do them. We'll do them a few ways. Yeah. I'm thinking frog leg scampi, maybe a blackstone frog leg. Oh, that'd be good too. We'll a fried buffalo style frog leg. Then we'll frog do some leg barbecue sandwiches. frog leg. I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> frog leg slide. How can you, you think you could debone them? <laughs> yeah. I don't know if it'd stay together. Because, you know, the way I like them, they come in pairs. It's like, it ain't just like one leg and one leg. It still has the pelvis, yeah. you know, and, and even the web feet on them a lot of times. <laughs> Most of the time when I see them, they've, the feet have been remaining. Yeah. But, yeah, no, we'll do some frog legs. That's a great idea. Could you do it the way, like, Central Barbecue does their legs or, like, their uh, their smoke wings? wings? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah. I don't you see do why not. frog legs. And that paprika kind of yeah. seasoning on them. I can get down on that, I think. Yeah. We'll get everybody taste testing some legs. Yeah. <laughs> um. Anyway, so this week we did some short recipes. Real quick. Okay. If I win this next employee contest, it's going to be Battle of the Frog Legs. Okay. <laughs> How does that hey. go? <laughs> well, We've got one coming up that's all, what, pasta? Pasta, yeah. Yep. At least I know I'd be able to pick the one after yeah. that. So. No, you got to lose to pick. <laughs> yeah, you got to lose to pick. Oh, Oh, if you win, you know. so you need to tank. So I need to tank pasta. Okay, <laughs> easy spaghettios. And I've seen this on. I seen this yesterday on. I don't know if it's on Facebook or TikTok. It had to be on Facebook, but it was like best appetizer ever. And it was like a, a boiled egg half, like you would devil eggs, canoed yeah. out, filled with spaghettios, Ugh. and then like garnish with like green onion. Ugh. That's spaghettios gonna, are gross. I didn't think that they were because I was like living off of childhood nostalgia yeah, and I cooked yeah. them for my children the other day and tried them and I was like, nope, <laughs> yeah. not for me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> They're not as good as you remember. No, yeah. not at all. They have a very, very processed flavor. They're like almost acidic. I'd be like, willing to yeah. bet Jamie's got a can back there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he bought a flat of them when we first moved into this building. Heck yeah, he got loves them lunch. for lunch. <laughs> and they don't smell bad when they're heating up, you know. With All those taste the same. The SpaghettiOs, the Spaghetti Meatballs, the Ravioli. It is the same. It's the same processed stuff. How about the one with Frank's? That was my jam when I was a kid. Ugh. Little sliced up pieces of hot dog. In pasta? I don't, yeah. Oh, I oh in like that. your SpaghettiOs? Yeah. They still uh, sell them. I saw them there the other day. I, I remember Beanie Weenies. Kind of same thing. Kind of same thing. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. beans instead of O's. So I've been... I'm not saying this is a super healthy dish, but I've been trying to eat a little better. Yeah. At least for lunches and things like that. And this has been a great way to us avoid eating out when we're at work or at lunch is cooking some chicken breast. And I, we buy the boneless, skinless chicken breast. And I showed how to do this on a video. That's what we're talking about. Um, I did them barbecue style on a pellet grill. What's a barbecue style on a pellet uh, grill? Just AP, regular barbecue rub, pellet grill. Straight chicken breast. I usually set it on a little raised rack just because it's easier to move around. Put it on 400 degrees. Put you a thermo, a thermo probe in it, you know, from a dot or something. Just watch the internal temperature. Take it to about – now, you got to take it to 165. But here's the deal. Take it to 160 and let it carry over to 165. If you do that with your chicken, it's, especially the white meat, it's going to stay juicy. And this and this chicken stays – like, we ate some yesterday. It's we really cooked good. this last, you know – 
end of last week, and it was still juicy when you warmed it up slightly. Don't overwarm it because it'll get it dry as a bone. But, but I take that, and so I it like takes cold. It takes roughly forty five minutes to an hour at hundred degrees, depending on how big that breast is. Take them off and let them rest. I don't glaze them. I don't put anything extra sweet on it. Just whatever rubs on it. And if you you know if you want to get even better, use a rub that don't have any sugar. My rub's got a little bit of sugar, but it's not enough to hurt anybody. And, <laughs> yeah, look at me. And then I, but so then I take them and slice them thin, and it kind of ends up with this piece of chicken breast medallion. And you can probably with one big boneless skinless breast, you could probably make three wraps out of it because you can you can only put so much in a wrap. And I buy I buy the big burrito size shells, and we found this one brand. It's it's like a low carb, extreme holy, wellness. Yeah, extreme wellness, and they're great. But you can also use a regular just burrito wrap. Yeah, if you don't care about here. the calories. Get you a flour one and roll with it. But I take so I take uh, baby spinach. You could use lettuce, but I like the baby spinach better. I put um, a little bit. Now I don't know if I did this in the video, but this is how I do them. I usually put me a little bit of blue plate because I got to have a little creaminess, and I, it ain't it ain't a full serving, but it's enough to get it creamy. In the video, you use the white barbecue sauce. Yeah, but I was gonna do that on the chicken. This yeah. one makes it barbecue chicken wrap. Okay. Because it's white barbecue sauce. But I like to put the spinach down, put some cheese down. I use feta cheese. You could use whatever kind of cheese you want. Sliced Roma tomatoes thin. Lay that down. And then you arrange you about, I don't know, six, seven little medallions of that thin sliced chicken breast. Drizzle the white barbecue sauce over it. And then roll that dude up like a burrito. Bring the two sides kind of over a little bit. And then tuck it in tight. And then cut it at an angle. And you've got... A, deli- and a little extra barbecue, white barbecue sauce to dip it in. You've got a heck of a lunch, a barbecue. And it, I mean, Very it's good. not bad for dinner, but it, I mean, it's good for you too. We've also used like a Italian dressing in replace yeah. of a mayonnaise yeah. or something. Well, the one I like or is Greek. Ken's makes a, it's an olive and vinegar Ken's. And man, it's great. It is good. Yeah, just on a wrap like that. Ken's dressings are I like my it. favorites. Yeah. They're good. You. Roll perfect uh, wraps. Like when I try to do it, uh, it's either a mess or it's just a taco. You know, you know the, uh, one of the things. The key is you can't overstuff it, and you can't go edge to edge with the filling. You got to know it's like rolling egg roll or something. You got to know that you're going to fold up the sides, and that's because that's what's going to make it stay together. And then when you wrap it, I watched them do this at Moe's and Chipotle. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> that's, how I, that's how I learned. But you take it and you kind of pick up the edge you're going to roll. You use both hands and you get it over it and then you use your hands to tighten it up, your fingers. Mm-hmm. So you kind of tighten everything up and roll as you do that and it makes it stay together. And then always end up seam side down. And you can stick a toothpick through it if you need to. But once you cut it diagonal, it usually stays together because you've got it tightly wound up. But if you have too much of anything, it'll blow it out. Because I've had a blowout my Chipotle's before, and it just turns into a mess. So yeah. <laughs> they'll holler for a double wrap. We need a rewrap, and it'll just end up being this glob of – you can't just have them loaded up with the kitchen sink. It's got to be precise amount. Speaking of Chipotle, Chipotle sucks. <laughs> you know? Whoa, 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 whoa. We have the whoa. worst branch ever. I don't know. Maybe it's South just Haven. the one we have around here. Every time of- I eat it, it's so good. I was like, yeah. what do y'all I like get? that kind of – you know, that's – I get the burrito thing. with everything by <laughs> <laughs> An extra extra queso. <laughs> they didn't know how to make queso, and all they do is take a little white like ice cream cup and dip it in there. It took us thirty minutes to get some queso and chips, hmm. and then it was stone cold. I was I've, like, man, that good? I've never been in there before. Um, I always go through the Chipotle lane <clears throat> when I get it and order it ahead and Chipotle. stuff. <laughs> I don't get the queso. I like Aust- Austin and my wife both love the queso there. I'm not like a huge fan of it. I'm more of like an extra guac kind of guy, you know. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but their know. guac sucked. <laughs> they could learn. They could, they could learn a few things from La Siesta. Yeah. <laughs> I, just, I, I mean, Guac's yeah. one of my favorite foods. I think Moe's is better. I like Moe's better. Yeah, me too. Chipotle. I will give Chipotle another chance. Really Are y'all going it. at nighttime or during the day? We went for lunch. Lunch. Okay. Yeah, and it was. I mean, it was a good little line of folks. It wasn't extremely crowded, but they had five people on a line that should have maybe had two. Yeah. And none of them knew what they were doing, and then the manager was just instead of helping them or telling them what to do, she was just yelling at them. <laughs> And it might have been in. A, it was a bad situation. A labor issue. There. I've never been during the day. I don't think always at night. So might be one of those things. I don't know. It's, um, I'd have to. I guess I'd have to give it another shot to be fair. Oh yeah, I'll give it another impressed. shot. 
Y'all been to the Whataburger line yet? No. no. I'm going to no. brave it soon, I think. I think because like, every time I drive by, it's not looking too bad. It's only looking like... Really? It kind of looks more like the Chick-fil-A line does yeah. right now, and it seems to be going pretty I've, fast. So I haven't had fast food in a minute, so I'm doing good. Um, Back to your shorts real quick. Yeah. So what was the next one you wanted to... Island Fire Wings. Now, that one is... Spicy. <laughs> yeah, it's super spicy. It's kind of a... Not a jerk wing... But I used the jerk seasoning to season. The, I, I, I used to me. It tasted like a. Jerk you think wing. it tastes like a jerk wing? Yeah. I mean, the sauce Souped is up jerk wing. The so, it, so what I did, I took jerk seasoning, seasoned wings and flats, put them offset on a Weber grill, like two's on fire, hot coals on one side, all the wings on the other side, and cooked them like that the whole way, just turning them every five minutes or so, making sure they cooked even, moving them around as needed, took them to about. I don't know, 190 internal. I usually, I mean, you got to take a, a wing at least to 165, but a wing to me is not done at 165. Yeah. It's not going to release off the bone. It's not going to be that perfect bite. It's not, you know, mm-hmm. that's how it's I want my wings. Bone. And so I take them up to sometimes 205. And, I mean, don't knock it till you try it. Just they, don't burn them up there. You got to do them I, in the right you, reasonable rate. Yeah. If you do get a little too far, they do kind of get a mushy texture. Yeah, you can go too far on them. But I think that they at least need 190. That's what I think 190 is. uh, You'll see me whenever I usually do a recipe on wings, I'll say, cook it to 165, but I go to 190. You know, because I'm just covering my bases. Like, that's where you got to take them to a minimum of 165, but a little extra on a wing and you're okay. And I would never take a chicken breast that far as it's going to be dry like shoe leather. But a wing's got, I mean, there's not much to a wing anyway. Yeah. And it's got enough fat and skin, and you want to render that, you know, to where it's bite through and comes off. That's why I take them a little further. But after they get cooked, like they're kind of, it looks like a char grilled wing almost. It's really never been over the heat, but the way the Weber cooks it, it's it's really good. And, and you, you can do these. Jerk. You can do these on a pellet grill if you want. You can do them on any grill, smoker, whatever. Just start with the jerk seasoning on them. I didn't put anything else. Might have sprayed them with a little duck fat just so they'd help them brown up some. And then I took my Island Fire hot sauce, and if you didn't have the Island Fire, you could buy, like, a Jamaican hot sauce. There's, you know, a couple different brands they sell in the grocery store. If y'all have not tried the Island Fire need to. sauce, Malcolm's Island Fire, it's hot. It's not. <laughs> it is hot. It ain't. It's not that. It don't, is it burn? You think it's hotter than burn them down? They're both hot. Mm. They're both hot. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but I, so I mean, it's good. So to tame that heat, but I gotta, I gotta tame it. Yeah, yeah. So to tame that heat, I bought a jar of pineapple, red pepper jelly, and it's like bell pepper and pineapple preserves, all in you know jelly form. Yeah, took about half that jar, which I would say it's probably about half a cup. Put it in a microwave and melted it. I did put a splash of water in there just to give it a little moisture, but it turns it to a liquid. But you still get the fruit, and you still have the chunks of peppers. That's going to stick to the outside of the wing. And so then I took about half that bottle or half a cup equal parts to the jelly of the Island Fire hot sauce and put in there. Whisked it all up really good, incorporated it, stuck it back in the microwave so it was warm. And you could do this on a stovetop, but the microwave is easy in a Pyrex little measuring cup. And then when those wings come out, put them in a bowl with a lid, tossed them, you know, put that sauce in there, lid on, tossed them a few times, flipped them around and served them. And it's a simple recipe, but but it's got some flavor. It's got some heat, and it's it tastes really good. And you get the, you know, you get that island feel from it. Mm-hmm. But you get that sweet pineappley balance and the little chunks of peppers and stuff. And you could make it as hot as you wanted to. Like yeah. if you want to put extra heat, add a little more sauce. I was. Worried. If you want to tone it down a little more, back off the sauce and add a little butter, something to kind of you know neutralize some of that heat. But I was worried. Um, they would be too hot for me, but that sauce is kind of thin, so it doesn't yeah. like stick to the wing too much. That's right. That's it right. gives it just the amount of coating so that it's a good burn, but it's not. Mm-hmm. And it has that because it's got scotch bonnet peppers. They're kind of a sweet flavor to the sauce, mm-hmm. and then you get the pe- preserves and the bell pepper kind of flavor. It has a lot going on for three three ingredients to it a wing. Is. You know, I like that of adding the um, uh, pineapple. Jelly, yeah, because it's got the little red peppers in it, and it gives you that Jamaican look. The texture, you know? yeah, yeah, it really does. I, I y'all need to try those because they're good. Yeah, they're pretty good. Huh. There wasn't none left. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I got a couple uh, community questions. I'm All right. Throw at you. 
I like those. First of all, um, did y'all see the pulled pork calzone that Mike did? No. I did not. Ooh, it, it was like. Did he do it like he made his own pizza crust and folded it to a calzone? Or? He had a, he got a pizza crust ball. Yeah. And, you know, flattened, flattened it, out, it out, stuffed it. Pulled pork, cheese. What kind of cheese did he use? Mozzarella? Um, I think he used mozzarella. Was there peppers or any kind of veg in it? Yeah, I think he put some peppers in it. I mean, you could make it whatever yeah. you wanted. Mm-hmm. I'd put a little red pepper, some jalapenos. A pulled pork calzone. I've never yeah. had that. You I did, like calzones. Heck yeah. It looks so good. I'm like a white sauce guy on calzone, so I feel like the Mississippi oh. white sauce on yeah. that would be oh, yeah. jam up. That's you know, not really I'll never mix that with the Alfredo sauce. That would be good, though. White barbecue sauce with Alfredo, like a creamy Alfredo. Like, like or just use thick. it in your plate. Could you use it'd be it? kind of thin. You yeah. could, but... I mean, it'd be vin- real vinegary too, but with the pulled pork, it would go. Yeah. So I would, I would, I gotta try that. We've used white sauce on pizza before for a pulled pork pizza. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. It's good as the pizza sauce. Yeah. But he just cooked it on a like a pizza stone on uh on the grill or a pizza. Oven. It was an acorn or a oh yeah ceramic. That's cool. But it, it looked really good. Did it brown up real good? And yeah. Look crunchy. Oh yeah, it looked like something you got from an Italian restaurant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. It was big, and he cut into his <laughs> – oh, it looked good. Um, so, okay, that wasn't really a question. So this is a question. So Terrell said he's going to be using a new Weber Performance charcoal grill. Um, he wants to grill both a ribeye and a flat iron steak because um, he's doing a party of eight people. I guess he's doing a steak flight. Mm-hmm. Um, so he wants to know should he do like a – he says partition the coals, which would be a cool zone, hot zone – um, two's on fire, um, or should he just spread them out evenly? And how long would he look for taking? I mean, it depends. These steaks? So it, it depends on the size of those steaks. Um, a typical ribeye, one pound, about an inch and a quarter thick. Usually, it's going to be six to eight minutes, depending on where you like it. If you like over it direct, up, over direct. And, and I do them over direct, but it doesn't. If you want to, it's never a bad idea when you're first cooking on the grill. To keep you a safe zone. But you don't necessarily have to go half and half with the hot coals. You could just go like three quarters and leave you enough room to get your steak off of direct heat over to the side. Um, You can do the flat iron and the ribeye at the same time. The flat iron, normally for me, I like a medium rare. and They take 10 to 12 minutes. That's cooking at about 550. You know, Is that count. direct too? It's direct heat. Um, what I typically do is I get me a good sear, though, and I move them over to the side and let them come up. And I would do the same thing with the ribeye. On, on my, if, if you're running a ribeye that size, about 16 ounces, and I would I would say cook it medium rare because that's where I like to eat mine. Flat irons, I usually lean a little on the rare plus. Instead they carry of, over yeah, pretty they good. They do, they do. But I would go, I would get in that minute 30 seconds. If you're cooking on grill, or even if you're just cooking on the regular grate, get in the habit of turning that steak um, so it'll create a nice little char marks on it, but a minute 30 and then give it a little 90 degree rotation, a minute 30, flip it over, do the same thing, and then get it over to that little cool zone you created and start watching the internal temperature on it. Now you could leave it. It's going to go faster if you leave it over direct heat and you, you'll get an uneven cook. So moving it over to that little cool zone will help you a little bit. And it'll allow and you to nail the That's right. Now for the flat iron though, a minute 30 is not going to do it each time. It's going to take about – Two minutes, 45 seconds to three minutes each turn. And so that's going to put you at – So that's what, that's, five to that's six all, minutes? Five to six minutes each side, side and that's going to get you in that same range. And so I would rather be five minutes on each side, so two and a half, two and a half, flip, two and a half, two and a half, move over, instead of just trying to do the whole thing and catch it. If, especially if you're new to cooking steaks like that. It's not hard to do, but it just it's a little safety net, and I like having that safety net. But you really need you. Don't go by straight time and temp. You need your thermometer, an internal thermometer, so you can stick that steak. Um, they do make small enough probe ones where you can put a wired probe in there and watch it. Now, usually I don't probe it until I'm going to move it over because you're going to be flipping it and you get tangled up in the cord and stuff. And, you know, you can, but it's it's easier to me yeah. if I probe it once I move it over. Just when you're probing it, make sure you go in from the side of the steak, not directly from the top, and make sure you're going into like the center part of it. So keep it centered like as best you can, right straight on the edge to about the middle, kind of eyeball it, and then watch your temperatures that way and take them off. Uh, when that ribeye gets to about 125 to 128, take it off. 
When that flat iron gets to about 122 to 125, take it off. Now, if you're wanting to go more, just use your preference on what degree of doneness that's for me. But I think they shine at that, especially the flat iron on the rare plus, no more than medium rare. Because Ribeye mediums still okay, but if you get in the medium well, I mean, it, to each his own, it's just not for me. You're ruining a good piece of meat cooking it that well done. But some people like it well done, so who am I? Yeah, but with the flat iron, I feel like on the edges, you get a little more well done, and it gets yeah, meaty. Yeah, it does, and, you know. and it depends on the size of the flat iron. Some of them, you know, some of them are just barely over a pound. Some of them are three pounds. You never know what they're going to have. I usually like the ones that are two and a half, three, because it's a, like you said, I can get some more done towards the edge, middle thick pieces are still good and rare, and then it you know kind of evens out across the whole state to where we do eat one flat iron for three or four people. It's just it's, yeah. it's a great little steak to do that with. Serve it with a salad, a wrap, whatever. anything. Yeah, asparagus and little potatoes. That's great. A baked potato. Um. So Samuel has a question. He's going to start saving for a new stick burner. He said he's outgrown his old one. Any suggestions, um, brands? If it's for the home. I mean, there's some good ones out there. Um, you know, I'm partial to my outlaw patio, but I mean, that's a big, I, yeah, it's a, it's a, I mean, if, I, if I'm looking for something that, you know, if you're looking big box store, go check out some of those ones at Academy or I think it's, a, you know, Oklahoma Joe makes a, you know, kind of a home model. Um, some of those thinner wall ones, I'm not like the Brinkman's and things like that. I'm not really crazy about because the metal's too thin and you end up fighting it. I'm not saying you can't cook on one. But I would look for something that's built out of thicker gauge steel. It's going to stand up to the elements outside. It's going to hold heat better. Um, you want to make sure on the firebox side that you have some kind of fire basket or grate because you got to get those coals elevated off the bottom so you can get airflow. That's what makes it work. And, and you know, look for some that seals up when you pick the lid up. You want to have a nice heavy lid that's sealing good. And you need, you know, good airflow from the intake on the – firebox side to the the pipe on the far side the outtake pipe you want airflow across it and you know look for something if, if you know about how much meat you're going to be cooking so always go a little bit bigger than what you think you're going to need on yeah. that on size and you'll, you'll be fine you know that's good tips because everybody has a different budget yeah, not everybody can right. afford a seven thousand dollar well that one's not seven it's, i mean the outlaw patio i think's in the four range isn't it Eh, so it's up it's, there. But, yeah. but it's a you know it's a substantial pit. I mean, you're gonna it's one of those things when you get ready to do that, you probably do have a little bit more budget. Yeah. To get a stick burner. But depending on what your budget is, yeah, that's those right. Are the that's things right. That you're looking for. And don't be don't be scared. Like in in the community, if you see some models that you're looking at, take a picture of it, post some info about it, and see what people's feedback is. There might be some people out there that have that exact grill that can give you some great takes on what it cooks like. You know. Never hurts to ask. I always ask. Yeah, yeah. Do your research before you go drop that money. I mean, you know, you're spending a good bit, of, a good chunk of change on a pit or any kind of grill. Do some research on it. Ask. There's no dumb questions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes there are, but no, I'm with no, you. I don't always. Think, I, I don't think there is. If you don't know the answer, it ain't. If you don't know the answer, it ain't a dumb question. Um. Yeah, that's all I have. You're just stirring the pot. I did see one on there. Somebody asked about whaling. Waylon is alive and kicking. He's doing well. We still <laughs> cook. We still cook together. That. Oh, did you? No, we still cook together. We don't get to do it all the time because he's man, he's working like crazy. He's in commercial construction, working on hotels and all shopping centers and all kinds of stuff. And we do contest. He cooked with us at Memphis in May. We hadn't we hadn't got back on the competition trail this much which is because we've both been busy. But we still cook and come hunting time. We do a lot of cooking at camp, so that's that's coming up and. So yeah, he still and I do. It would be a great idea to get him on the podcast and talk sometime. So we'll have to we'll have to work that in. See if he can if he can shoot over here and, and join us for uh, talk about barbecue. Yeah, he loves to cook. He just don't get to do it as often as he'd like. I and he like don't. That's most. People, <laughs> yeah. That's most people. Yeah. But yeah, is there? Uh, that's goddess, right? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's all I had today. All right, uh, Tyler, uh, man, tell everybody where they can find us. Make sure you guys check out uh, the Facebook community. I'm let's just you can look up "Let's Get to Cooking." There's lots of like-minded pit masters, lots of really informational stuff on there, and you can share recipes. And then also, if you're listening to this on YouTube, make sure you guys subscribe to our How to Barbecue Right podcast channel, and that's where we post all our podcast clips and new podcast episodes. So, and if you have the bell turned on, you'll be notified when new episodes go live. So, Michelle. 
How can they get, if they need to ask us a question, what can they do? Um, make sure you mark next Wednesday if you want to join us for the live stream, um, 6 o'clock. I think that's about right. Six yes, 6, 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. Um, I'm sure Tyler's going to put out an alert some kind yeah. of way. Uh, if you'd like to connect with Malcolm, it's How to BBQ Right on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, TikTok, and of course YouTube. If you'd like to connect with me, it's Miss Southern Shell on Instagram. All right. Well, hey, we appreciate y'all hanging out with us for this episode of How to Barbecue Right, the podcast. We will be back next week for another fun-filled, informative episode. (laughs) Y'all liked that close, didn't you? We'll see y'all next time. We gone.